Hello, Professor Sargent here with you again in our second video for a flipped classroom of Math 101. And we're going to be looking at section 2.4 here. We want to discuss linear inequalities in two variables. If we had instead of an inequality symbol here, then if that was an equal sign, we would have the equation of a line um, that is in standard form. If you replace the equal sign with an inequality symbol, you have four choices, uh, strictly less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. Solutions would be those points with x, y ordered pairs that when you plug in, would make this inequality a true statement when you compare the two numbers. I'll give an example shortly. What's going to happen is because we have an equal sign in uh, being replaced by an inequality symbol, instead of just graphing a line, if we have strictly less than or strictly greater than, then the line that we're going to graph is going to be dashed, whereas if you have an or equal to sign, the line will be solid. Dashed means not included, solid means included. Upon doing that, there are going to be solutions in the plane that are not on the line. The line, whether it's included or not, solid or dashed, is going to split up the overall plane into two half planes. And our question is going to be, how do we find out which side of the line has the solution points? So here are our objectives. So given a linear inequality in two variables, we want to graph them. Or if we're given the graph, what was the linear inequality in two variables that produced it? And finally, look at the graph of the intersection of two linear inequalities. That can be of uh, particular interest for those of you that are majoring in something business related and going on to Math 220, because you're going to be taking a look at ways of uh, finding the optimal solution to something, maximizing something or minimizing something. That also is just a major portion of math wherever it gets used. So I'm just using the example that comes most quickly to mind. All right, here's our first example. We're gonna be able to graph the boundary line using slope intercept because Y is isolated and we've got MX plus B over on the other side. However, because of the strictly less than, it's going to be dashed and then we have to figure out which side of the boundary line our solutions are and shade them. So our slope is one fifth and we have a y-intercept at zero comma four. So I'm going to select the line tool and then switch it to dashed plot the point zero comma four, zero comma four right there, and use the fact that the slope is positive one fifth, that means I'm gonna go up one and right five over to the point, sorry, up one and right five. So up one from four would put me at a Y coordinate of five, and the run of five gives me an X coordinate of five, okay? And notice that um, because we have the strictly less than, that's gonna show me a dashed line. Now, before I continue, Before I continue, we're gonna to have to figure out which side to shade. 
And that will be done using the bucket showing here. How do we do that? Well, we had y less than one fifth x plus four. Pick any point that is not on the boundary line. The easiest point when it's not on the boundary line is the origin zero comma zero. So I'm going to plug that in to the inequality and see if I get a true. Okay, so up above is what I use to graph that dashed boundary line. And I'm testing zero comma zero. Do the arithmetic over here. By the order of operations, you would multiply first and then add the four. So we'd have zero plus four. And that is four on the right hand side. So we're asking the question, is zero less than four? The answer is yes. So we shade the side of the inequality that includes zero, zero. Uh, shade the side of the, uh, of the boundary line that includes zero, zero. Let's take a look at that and how to get that to show up on my lab. Okay, so zero, zero is down here. And I select the bucket and press it on that side of the boundary line. And it's filled it in with shading. Now, before I press save and check the answer, why are we doing that? Well, first of all, because that boundary line is diagonal. It is not as easy to tell what's less than or greater than something because we're in two dimensions. Uh, what else? Provided all my work has been correct, then any other point on this side, such as 10 comma zero, should also be a solution to the inequality. One fifth of 10 is two, two plus four is six, and I have a y value of zero over here. Is zero less than six? Yes. Whereas if I put in, say a y coordinate, Sorry, let's go with zero comma 10 up here. Put in zero for X, one fifth times zero is zero. Zero plus four is four, but I'm testing this point up here. 10 is not less than four. So nothing on that side would work. I only need to do one test point. And since in my case with zero comma zero, it made the inequality true. I shade in that side. If it did not make it true, I would have shaded the other side of the boundary line. So I'm saving that and checking my answer, and it is good. So now let's check out this one. We have 8x plus 4y greater than or equal to 32. If that was an equal sign, this equation would be in standard form. And since eight and four go into 32, although I could solve this for y, instead, I'm going to find the x and y intercepts. So putting in zero for four, four times zero is zero, eight x plus zero is still eight x. And remember, I'm dealing with the boundary line here. Since that's greater than or equal to, that's gonna be a solid line. So I keep that choice. Um, four comma zero. I say eight X equals 32. So X equals four. When I put in zero for X, four Y equals 32. Gives me that Y is eight. And when I put in a test point, zero comma zero again, since that's not on the line, Eight times zero plus four times zero will give us zero plus zero, which is zero. Zero, however, is not greater than or equal to 32. So I have to shade the side of the boundary line that does not have the origin on it. And saving that and checking the answer, it is good. We need to show that work of testing a point. State what the test point is, what happens when you put it in, 
don't just shade without showing that. Now this one, I could get y alone and have y greater than negative 6x. So let's see that. y greater than negative 6x. Let me double check that. I think I was subtracting 6x from both sides. Yes. OK. Now that means that I have, if that was an equal sign there, I would have y equals negative 6x as the equation of the boundary line. And that would tell me that b is 0, meaning my y-intercept is the origin. So select the line tool. We're back to a strictly greater, so a dashed line, 0, 0. Make sure you can see that, 0, 0. And then use the slope, which we saw would be negative 6. We're going to go down 6 and right 1. So now I'm at 1 comma negative 6. Since the origin is on that boundary line, then I have to pick something else for a test point. I could test something such as 1 comma 1. So test 1 comma 1. And that means we're asking the question, is 1 greater than negative 6 times 1? And that would give us that 1 is greater than negative 6, which is true. So we shade the side that has 1 comma 1 on it. So that's going to be over here. Select the bucket. Click on this side. Save. And check. And didn't like something. Give me a moment to figure that out. It's quite possible that I just did not uh, look carefully at the coordinates when I was clicking my points here. So I'm going to clear this out and start more carefully with, see that's a strictly greater than, so I need a dashed line, 0 comma 0, 1 comma negative 6. That's right. Got some controls in the way. And then we tested 1, 1. Found that that made things true. So we shaded to this side. Saving it and checking it. And we're good. If we rewrite this by subtracting 4 to have x greater than or equal to negative 4, the boundary line is when x is exactly equal to negative four, and that's gonna be vertical. Because we've got the or equal to, keep that solid, negative four. I could plot any two points with an x coordinate of negative four, connect with that solid line because of the or equal to. And in a case of horizontal and vertical lines, as opposed to diagonal, it's easier to tell while well, things over here are going to be where we have an x coordinate greater than negative four. And so that's good. Here we are asked for the inequality that produced that graph. I'm gonna zoom in on that a bit. It looks like we have a boundary line where the y-intercept is 0, 5, and then it's going down 5, right 6. Looks to me like we have a slope of negative 5, 6, 
and again, zero comma five for the y-intercepts. Now, what should be done to first write the equation? Uh, let's see here. We could go with A. But I've just read it off. So let's see, we had zero comma five and four comma two, it appears to be. And then the slope, two minus five over four minus zero, it's gonna be negative three fourths. Okay, so I was wrong about what the slope was. Uh, that's because it didn't cross exactly at six, though, six over there. Okay, so negative three quarters. Happy there. The y-intercept, we already stated, was zero comma five. They want an ordered pair. So the boundary line would be y equals negative three quarters x. Notice how I had to scroll right to type the x. I don't want that in the denominator, plus five. Now the boundary line is dashed, we'd see that, that means that whatever the inequality is, um, to replace the equal sign is going to be um, the inequality sign is not going to be uh, including an or equal to. It's going to be, since it's dashed, we will not have the or equal to. Now, I don't like this terminology saying it's below or above because this is two dimensional, but that's what they're making us answer with. The solution contains the values of the inequality that are, well, our original inequality here, we don't know. If we test something like zero, zero, Put in zero for x, negative three quarters times zero is zero. Zero plus five is five. Well, zero is strictly less than five. That's a true statement and we've shaded that side. So strictly less than. And therefore our inequality Replace that equal sign that we had to come up with the, or uh, replace the equal sign with an inequality strictly less than, choice D in this case. And that way, that is our inequality. All right, I think I've got one more, let me check. Yes, just one question left. The first one, I'm going to graph using intercepts, and we have strictly, uh, not strictly, we've got greater than or equal to six. So, um, by the intercepts, three comma zero will be the x-intercept, and again, that's greater than or equal to, so a solid line, three comma zero, and then when you put in zero for X, solve negative Y equals six, that will give you Y equals negative six. Therefore, our Y intercept is zero comma negative six, uh, connected by a solid line. When we put in a test point, it's gotta be something that's not on the boundary line. We're back to one where the origin is not on there. So we're asking the question, two times zero minus zero. That arithmetic would give you the question to ask, is zero greater than or equal to six? That is a false statement. So we would shade to this side. 
And then second one, y strictly less than four, if that was an equal to, then I would have a horizontal line for y equals four. I'm gonna connect them because it's strictly less than with a dashed line and I will shade below that. Well, that makes it a little tough to see, but what's in common? Let's see here. Let's see what they're asking for. And it says the word and. So it wants the intersection. What would be common? So I'm gonna have to do a little editing here. Let's see if I can get rid of. So the word and right here is going with intersection. Uh, use delete to erase the previous uh, shadings for the individual parts. We want to find out only what's in common. I'll say for class time, if the word was or, which talks about the union of the solutions of inequalities, we'll save that for class time. You see what happens if I try to press right here? Yes. Is both stuff that is less than four and has two X minus Y greater than or equal to six. So I'm gonna save that and check the answer. And it is good. That's it for now. See you in class.